Minus 60 seconds. Best recorders, high speed. Check all batteries. Minus 50. Armed. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Your goal 4, for APU shut down on time. 2, 1, lift off. Go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Still on its way to orbit after a uh, successful uh, ascent up through main engine cutoff. Houston, 20 seconds to LOS Tdris. Nice to be in orbit. This is Escape Pod, part of the Outbreak Podcasting Network. Visit our website at outbreakpodcast.com. And now here's your hosts, Tony Brown and David Anthony. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Escape Pod. I'm David, and that's Tony. That's it. Uh-huh. I told you I wasn't going to say my name. And, and we have a wonderful <laughs> guest with us today. Tony, you're just too funny. We have David Haynes with us from Escape Today. Yes. Hey Welcome. there. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, Two man. Davids, one booth. Awesome. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Claustrophobic hell. Don't be afraid, Tony. Davids won't take over. <laughs> we, we will. Yeah, what? Trying to escape from the studio. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, it's all those stairs. It's, it, it is. It is. All those stairs to get so, down to the bunker, right? right. But That's we, what it is. We let David take the elevator so he didn't have to deal with the 3,642 stairs that it takes to get down here. And that's pretty That's pretty deep. That is pretty deep. And I think that number might Kind of like change. the story that he's telling is just oh. keeps deeper and deeper. David, welcome. Thank you very much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. Glad you guys uh, came by the other night. And oh, it's nice yeah. to to meet some people who are doing this sort of thing in town. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Well, I'll tell you, um, my son and then uh, his wife and then now my daughter has been there as well. And they love escape rooms. And the, yours awesome. was the only one they'd ever been in. And they kept bragging about it and going on about it. And my son's been back like three times now. Wow. He even, I guess he won a shirt one time. He wears it all the time because he was does he, all... uh, does he need a job? <laughs> <laughs> well, he has a job, but you never know. He might get to do a part-time <laughs> job. So there you go. But uh, but he really, really enjoys it. So awesome. his enthusiasm and his excitement about it has got me interested in it. And oh, I'm yeah. like, man, I gotta, I gotta, we got to find out more about this. Yeah. So definitely. me and Tony were like, we... We want to know more about it, and we thought, well, let's just let's bring the man on himself. Yeah, and the, awesome. little, the little sneak peek we got was super exciting. Great, well, like, glad to I, hear it. it. It's probably such a little thing, but the real sand in the room was just—I was like, holy crap, there's real sand. In I was room. so <laughs> excited to be able to pull that off. That there, is amazing. there is okay. So we had a group come in a few weeks back. They had done over 200 rooms each across wow. the U.S. Wow, they had never seen sand in a room before, oh, and that awesome. made my week. That's awesome. That's what we are all about. Nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's that's the kind of dedication and the kind of level of quality that people are going to get when they come to Escape Today right. Escape Rooms here in Owensboro, and it's it's awesome. It's awesome. So let's uh, let's back up a little bit sure. and let's uh, let's figure out. Start at the us. beginning. Yeah. How did you get started? Long, and... long ago. <laughs> long, long ago. Okay. Wow. So where All did right. this where did this come from? This idea for you to 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 become a business. Okay, so um, it's it's a very interesting way that this happened. So for about two years, I worked downtown at Waxworks. Um, Mm -hmm. I thought I enjoyed my job and came to find out that I didn't very quickly. Um, Nine to five was just really not for me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had the crazy idea to basically quit my nice, stable, you know, guaranteed income to run a business that really in this area would probably not perform well enough for somebody to keep it open unless you know we did something crazy and brought people in from all over right so really that's what i set out to do um so i, I kind of quit my job i just took a whim trip over to the the one in evansville um and i don't want to rag on anybody but it was not quite to the quality that i would have thought um they could have done over there with the resources and the population they have. And I Mm -hmm. thought to myself, you know, for what they're charging, I can do a significantly better job and charge a cheaper rate. And so that's really what I and uh, my friend Max Garvin set out to do. And honestly, from the very beginning, we said, you know, as soon as this stops being fun, as soon as people stop having fun doing these rooms, we're done. You know, we're not really in this to become millionaires or make tons of money. And honestly, we haven't. But we're also working 
we don't feel like we have jobs, right. which is right. the best feeling in the world because we see people smile every day at the, the product that we give them. And honestly, it's, it's just a ton of fun. We get ourselves into new things like microcomputers or heck, we even built the, you know, the walls in the building with very little prior knowledge. Obviously, we had some guidance. They, they are up to code, I promise. <laughs> but um, we just love learning and we love seeing people have fun. And that's this is about the only business you can do that in anymore. Right, right. Yeah, it is. It is. And being self-employed is very awesome. So that is. <laughs> I mean, you, awesome. you can't be like nah, waking up and going. I'm not going to work. I'm going to have fun today. This right, right. Awesome. Or I'm not going until three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's. I nice. remember those days when I used to work at a tattoo shop. Is yeah. we didn't open until noon, sometimes one. So it was, you know. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it was drinking until 7 o'clock in the morning and laughing at people as they were going to work. Like, ha, ah, you're going to work, and I still got a beer in my hand. Ah. Yeah, I can't I quite get away with that, but, you know, you, well, same you deal. you could. You could just be, like, one of the crazy characters in one of your escape rooms. Like, well, that's, that's drunken true. kid. could really throw myself into the role, you know. <laughs> be a thespian. It's acting. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right. So, so, um, so you got you got started, and uh, you've got these uh, rooms, but it's, it's not like it's not just like one room. You have no. you have multiple scenarios going on. Can oh, you yeah. can you explain to us um, some of the ideas, I guess, behind the different choices that you have available currently? Oh yeah. So we we actually have three rooms, and we designed these with very, I guess, stringent themes. We wanted one to be scarier which is going to be in this community kind of the money maker mm -hmm. we put a lot of work into this one making it feel authentic it's called kidnapped and that one has a live actor in it so this is the one where we we just kind of made it as scary as we could as funny as we could it's it's more of the you're you're not going to be scared out of your shoes you're going to be laughing at your friend who got a little bit scared right so it's one of those great group activities where you can see your friends squirm <laughs> so we were extremely excited about that one then we got into our bread and butter ones um i am a former history professor um i taught for the community college system in murray state and um i have a fascination with africa and in particular egypt so we decided to make a room based on a pyramid, um, pyramid in, in Giza. That's mm -hmm. kind of what we went after. So that's why you had to have yes. the sand. <laughs> yes. And we wanted to go all out on that one. Awesome. Um, we put sand on the floor. We built a crypt inside. You know, we've got the salt lamps. The ambiance is just fabulous. Um, we, we just have a ton of fun with that one, too. And everyone loves that one as well. It's very cool, very yeah. and very detailed. Oh yeah, and see when we first set out, we we went to escape rooms that literally had six or seven locked boxes in a room full of white walls, a white ceiling, no decoration whatsoever, and when we went in, we were just like, you know, we're we're in somebody's closet. Yeah. With right. locked containers, you know, there might be a, a storyline or a script somewhere, but you know, the, the, they put minimal effort into this, and we don't feel like we are involved in the right. scenario. Or getting your money's worth. Yeah, e exactly. Right. Yeah. If and you, If you don't have that ambiance to make you feel like you're actually in it, then it's just... You might as well like, go yeah. to a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really? I, yeah. yeah. Um, we peeked in some of your rooms, yeah. and, you know, they were, you know, ceiling tiles missing and lights hanging and, you know, all kinds of craziness going on. So just stepping in there, I was like, yeah, this is going to be intense once you know the clock starts and, and the door shut get out oh yeah it, it's great when we we lock the uh the gate in the kidnapped room and you can just look at the people's eyes and they're like oh my god what did we get ourselves into is it too late to back out and then you shut that that cricky door and you know then they they realize they're stuck you know they've yeah. got to actually figure their way out of this one good luck <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. And um, so those are the first two rooms. And then uh, another passion project for me was the one we, we affectionately call Nuclear War. And this one, um, well, we, we try and base it off the, the Soviet Cold War with the U.S. circa 1970. Mm -hmm. But this one's my probably my favorite scenario because you have to figure out how to defuse a bomb. Oh, wow. And this room is the most challenging by far. Wow. So... So we, uh, it's a lot of lot of puzzle solving. Um, a lot of puzzle solving. There's a little bit of technology in there. So there is a bomb defusal kit. 
which we made. It's uh, it's pretty cool. The the first incarnation was a little bit stronger than the one we have now. We had actually like a simulated cutting wires connecting them to the you know the right leads and uh-huh. getting the positive symbols. Unfortunately, we had a lot of people that like to shake things, <laughs> so we, we kind of oh, had no. to make it a little simpler and a little more easy to uh, bolt down. But um, uh, still, general general concept is, is right. there. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And that one's a ton so of fun. Do you have a suggested age group for certain rooms because of how maybe how hard they are? We we do typically say um, we, we actually give free tickets to six and under just because we don't feel like they are quite at the level where they can contribute to the group as a whole. And we don't want you know anybody to get overly frustrated. And, right. But... But we like to say over six is when they really hit the the point to where they can contribute and do more of the abstract concepts, I suppose. Cool, cool. Yeah. So someone younger, someone that say somebody in the family could bring someone that's a little younger as long as there is an adult with them to help them through it. Right, right. Yeah, right. yeah a group of six-year-olds would probably not be the, yeah, no, the no. greatest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be in there for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to keep focused. Yeah. And, and then, of course, the kidnapped room is really, um, you know, we've seen some six-year-olds be able to handle it. Um, I actually unfortunately made someone cry today alone. Aww. That's great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's that's great. Yes. It, it did not feel it does not feel good a lot of the time to make people cry. But smiles and tears, that's what we're all about, I guess. Oh, that's <laughs> but, funny. But that just lets you know how realistic your room is. Right. Are, if you're making somebody cry, I mean it's like you said, it's not just a plain white room with a couple things in a box and exactly. a chalkboard on the wall where you got to do some math problems to figure it exactly. out. Exactly. They are honestly yeah. scared. Mm-hmm. So that's got to make for a great time for you, especially if, you, <laughs> if you're looking on the monitor going, hee, 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 it's working. <laughs> Now all all of your rooms have have monitors in them, right? Have cameras yes. in them, so you can you're actually keeping an eye on what really goes. So the let me I guess convey the message that this is a safe thing to do. Oh, definitely. Right. We so. have um, I mean, we have a waiver process that is literally you know just because our insurance company demands it. Of course, but these are highly controlled environments. Like nothing terrible can happen to you unless something catastrophic happens to the area in general. Right. right. Like everything's monitored. We're watching, you know, we might look away from monitor for five seconds at a time, but that's, that's the extent of it. Right. Like someone is always watching. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So is there a panic button or anything just in case someone may just totally break down and need to get out or can they honestly just open the door and walk out? What's great about it. Um, and great about the laws in Kentucky, of course, are the doors, in a business cannot legally have locks on them unless they're dressing rooms or there's a few other scenarios, but right. we cannot legally install locks on our doors. Cool. So people are free to come and go. And right. some people have taken advantage of that, but you know, 99.9% don't fall into that category. So they're there for the long run. Oh yeah. And just no matter how bad it gets, they're going to stick it out. Oh yeah. 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 Okay. So how often do people succeed compared to people that have you actually had people that give up or get so frustrated that just like we can't figure this out? We've actually never had a group give up, which is wonderful. That means that we good. are doing our jobs as well as, you know, I would hope. Yeah. Because we we want to feed information at, you know, critical times to where people keep moving towards their objective. We've been to some escape rooms where they literally throw you in and you don't hear a thing from anyone for a solid hour unless you ask for a hint. Wow. wow. And to us, we just thought, you know, okay, so you use your three hints, and let's say there's 30 minutes left in the game. So you're just done. You know, they might as well turn off the monitors and, you know, not even care about you anymore. Right. And we, we saw that that was a real flaw in a lot of other escape rooms. And generally speaking, the smaller guys are doing a better job at the customer service. I don't want to call out any of the chains or anything, but this right. is just what we've seen. You know, we, we really study a group's behavior. We don't take away cell phones or anything like that. So when we see cell phones coming out of pockets, we know people are getting frustrated and they need just a little bit of information to continue focusing on. Cool. Yeah. But that that's more like a, a real world scenario. Because right. Because that's what somebody's going to do if they happen to be in that that situation in real life. They're going to depend on their phone. To right. Like, exactly. Crap, how do I get out of here? Yeah. 
maybe Mr. Google can help me out, or I can <laughs> yeah. text somebody that may know something about this. <laughs> right. Phone so a that's friend. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Phone a friend. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we actually do have a link to the outside world. It's through the, the walkie talkie system. Oh, cool. So if uh, we, we grant three hints throughout the course of the game, three hard hints, you can ask anything you want. Right. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll pick up on things in the room sometimes. So let's say a combination to a lock is 777. Right. We will hear somebody say that. And let's say for whatever reason, somebody tries that, but doesn't enter it correctly. And they're like, oh, well, that didn't work. Sometimes in those situations, we have to interject. Right. Because otherwise, they're going to be really confused right. if they right. think they had the right combination. Right. So try again. <laughs> yeah. Please, uh, you've, you've got it. Try it. Uh, work that lock better. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and you, you mentioned 30 minutes. Is that the standard time for the rooms or some shorter, some, some longer? So 60 minutes is our standard room time. We did have a two-person room called Buried Alive Together, which was in a more confined coffin-like space. Oh, wow. When you guys, I'm not sure if when you guys came in, it was still there. Still there. Okay, yes, but it was. It is gone December. now. Okay, oh, wow. <laughs> it's completely gone now. Um, but that was the general gist, and that one was only a thirty minute. We just assumed that people wouldn't want to be lying down in a wooden coffin for an hour. Right. I don't know. Good, good call. <laughs> wow. That was that was just me personally thinking. <laughs> yeah. <right>. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so you're saying that you've you've taken one of the rooms apart, mm -hmm. but your goal now is to you're going to what revamp or you're going to keep it fresh. Yes. So we are we when we first got there, we hoped to redo a room every three months. Wow. Well, we found that we stayed so busy that we wanted to give people six months to really get in on the action. Oh, awesome! Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great problem to have. We wanted to do quicker, but of <laughs> right. course, at the same time. If we, we can tweak and learn more and more about these rooms, that we're, we're super excited to do our second batch of rooms because we have six months of learning experiences. Yeah. Right. What not to do, what to do more, and that stuff. So now it's going to up the ante and make it even a sweeter experience. Oh, yeah. All the rooms are doubling in size. Wow. Um, we're going to have hidden passageways. We're going to wow. have... Maybe oh, two floors, awesome. yeah. a little teaser. My yeah. goodness, this is a whoo. So are you going to start incorporating possibly more live actors in other rooms? We are. We are hoping to do that. We actually, this is way in the future, but we are hoping to purchase that building at some time, and there is over 10,000 square feet upstairs not used. Oh, wow. We are going to do a variant of escape rooms and laser tag. Wow. Eventually, that sounds fantastic. Yes, it does sound pretty awesome. <laughs> and the uh, the coolest thing is, it uh -uh. starts as a team, and it ends up in a free for all. Oh, oh, so, oh man! Okay, yeah, that, last oh, man standing. That's Friend against great. Friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Tony Brown's going down. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I'm sorry about that knife in your back, though. Yeah, what? That's all right. uh -huh, yeah, he's actually probably snake eyes over it. <laughs> oh yeah, light me up. Give me, take me out. Um, so, um, so we, we talked about the um, like the age yeah. kind of group. Um, do you have like um, I, I guess what's the biggest party you, you can you can take in currently? Because I know uh, I've seen some pictures of some of the oh, oh yeah. like a massive group, a lot You're of people. Right. So so right now all of our rooms are graded up to ten people in each one, and since okay. we have three, we can accommodate up to thirty people each hour. Oh, wow. On the weekends, we will generally be full for, I don't know, eight hours solid. Wow. So, we and obviously, we don't get 10 people in every room. Our right. average group size is about 4.5. But um, other than that, we've had parties um, from corporate offices of 30, of 25, 20. And we did OMS. They're all A students. They had a lot of kids get all A's this year. <laughs> um, That's a good thing. Yeah. And they had, I think, 76 total students come in. Wow. And they did three separate busload trips. So I think we had about you know, close to 25 each round. Right. And they were there from, I think, 8 to about noon. That's cool. In the process. But huh. it actually was they, – they organized it super well because – we, we would reset the rooms while they were busing the kids back to school. Then they'd pick up the next load. By the time they got back, we'd have them all reset. and Ready to it, go. It was great. That's yeah. perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
That's that's fantastic. To, yeah, to get and that we're going. we're hoping to get our yeah we're hoping to get our availability up to fifty each hour very soon. Wow, we'd love to be able to do that. Yeah, with, with all the upgrades that when we walk through, you were talking about that's and and then you're saying there's an upstairs. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just unlimited potential yeah. for what you can do. Oh yeah, and we've. We've lost out on a couple very large groups so far, just because of the space requirements. Right, but right. we uh, we're in about two thousand square feet right now. We really want four thousand, pretty yeah. badly. Yeah, that's it. That sounds like it's the way to go. Is mm -hmm. the bigger and, and better. Oh yeah. Uh, so um, so with that um, with that said, you've got um, like how can people I guess get a hold of you follow okay. check out where's your location let's yeah. let's go over some of that because oh uh, sure yeah all the contact info that's probably good right? luckily <laughs> you're actually you're actually really close to us a yeah. couple blocks away oh yeah and i just i just live right over there too so i mean well, fantastic. Yeah. fantastic <laughs> so um but we're six thousand feet below well, you know, we, are, we are below so. sea level but you know i didn't take that into factor yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's okay but the general area but see, you blindfolded me when you led me in see? here, so for all I know, you know, we're right off Frederick. We still. are someplace unknown. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but where are you located at? Uh, so we're at 527 Emory Drive, uh, right next to Wesley Park Plaza. Mm -hmm. Our standard hours are Monday through Wednesday. We take private appointments. You need to book 24 hours in advance. Um, that's when we do a lot of our corporate groups and stuff, you know off hours kind of bookings and you know kind of just interesting stuff and then three o'clock on friday thursday and friday we open on the weekends we stay open a lot later probably till about midnight i think this past weekend i was there till about 1 30. wow had a group walk in at you know um i think 12 45 or so <laughs> yeah and uh, you know I'm, I'm happy to do that right. that's fine oh, i mean yeah it's money and uh, and it's good for them right right exactly and as long as the light's on, we're there. We're happy to help. You know, so that's cool. Um, other than that, Sundays we're open from noon to 8. So you can give us a call at 270-240-4216, or you can book online at escapeowensboro.com. Fantastic. Two, All right. Two different, and heck, I've, I've taken bookings through email, through Facebook. Um, if you want to follow us on social media, Facebook's probably the place to start. We are, you know, fb.com mm -hmm. backslash. Uh, Escape Owensboro, and Twitter is the same handle, and then our Instagram, which is actually super popular. I don't, you know, I, I hadn't done Instagram before I started this business. <laughs> Me um, either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seeing the value in it. Um, but that is Escape Dot Today. Yeah. Cool. Instagram seems to be the way that everybody is leaning towards. Oh especially yeah. Especially younger people. Yeah. It's and, it's easy. You yeah. can shoot little video clips and all kinds of stuff up there too. Oh yeah, it yeah. helps. And we're gonna have all those links. In our oh, show cool. notes on our website at outbreakpodcast.com and Sweet. also going to be uh, in the description on the this YouTube uh, video. So all you do is just scroll down to the bottom. You'll see all the links, awesome. ways to get hold of you, your hours of operation, the phone number to reach, all that kind of stuff. Great. So you guys uh, need my Google Plus? <laughs> Does that exist anymore? <laughs> we're on Google Plus. Hey, hey, I, have, <laughs> yes. I have one follower. Thank you. Yeah, one. Yeah. Don't know who it is, but I have one. I think we've got a couple. Do we so. have a MySpace? No, we don't have MySpace. Or a Friendster? No, don't have Friendster. What about Zanga? <gasps> you owe me a beer. I know. And that was Eric Huskison. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Way to go, Eric. Way to go. Yeah, I didn't mute my phone. Oops. <laughs> so anyway, dang, that's one of our that's one of our things on our podcast. Man, even phone, I did that. Phone goes off. <laughs> my first one. <laughs> I was I was busy getting cameras ready and mm -hmm. changing background and Hey, there we go. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, we are very active on social media. We love it. We love to see your all's pictures. And we, we typically post every single one if we can. We try not to bog down Instagram. We used right. to post, like, oh, my gosh, like eight a day. Yeah. And we, we got, like, spam warnings on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, Ooh, everything. Yeah, yeah. So we limit it to about three a day, which is some people always call us and are like, we didn't see our, our photo on Facebook or Instagram. And I have to say, well, that's because there's, you know, 50 in the queue. We can only do three a day. So right. but you did have a, a, a bunch of pictures on the oh, wall yeah, as wall, soon yeah. as you walk in. We love doing that, too, because we are all about the community. And it's so fun when people walk in and they see our wall of pictures and they're like, well, I know I know Maddie and I know Tom. And, yeah, you know, right. that's the best part. 
Yeah, I know you've had a couple like the radio stations in there. Oh, yeah. The BKR. The BKR has been, been in. We're actually about to do a really large promotion for them. Um, it's going to be called Escape to Panama. Oh, you win some free uh, Panama tickets. I think it's a week long stay in a condo on the beach. Nice, very cool. Tony might have to start listening to country music for this. Uh, (laughs) No, never. (laughs) That's okay. Because that's two things I hate: country and the beach. So that's (sighs) that is true. You used to live in Florida, so not much for the beach. Not anymore. (laughs) It's fun to visit, but it sucks when you live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, (laughs) To me, I'm like, I'm like. Whatever, dude. <laughs> Say what you want. You're just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Negative. <laughs> never thought you'd own a farm either, did you? No, I definitely never thought I'd own a farm. But you own a farm. I do. And goats. <laughs> and goats. Lots wow. of goats. Yeah. You got all bases squared at this point, you know? It's been interesting living in Owensboro. Um, Tell me about it. It's surprisingly a better city than I thought it was going to be when we first moved here. It really has its moments. It, it we'll took say us that. a little while to find you know, some of the things that my wife and I were into, but we're right. slowly meeting people, and the podcast has helped immensely. Well, that's great. Yeah. You know, finding how many creative people there are here, and that's kind of why there's a, I wanted to start it, was just, you know, there's so many creative people that really aren't getting... Don't have an outlet. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're not able to say, hey, here I am, because... You know, we are a small city. We don't really mm-hmm. have... We don't know, have, like, an arts district or right, right. Yeah, and, any you know, sort of promotion. And we don't have, that. like, the weekly magazines that a lot of larger cities have. Right. When I lived in Indianapolis, you know, we had Nouveau, and it was listing out every exciting thing that was going on. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it came out all the time. Now you have to pay to be in the magazines around here. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, now there is, uh, there is one. Was it, uh, <laughs> was it uh, Owensboro Living? Is that what it is? Yeah, Owensboro Living Owensboro and Owensboro Living. Parent. That's yeah. Tanner West. Yeah. Those are, they're they're, they're nice cool. guys. Oh. Oh, yeah, oh, very and it's nice. like a, a monthly. Mm-hmm. Right. Man, we might have to talk to those guys. Yeah, Owensboro Living. So listen to Escape Pod and, you know, maybe write a good article because we love <laughs> Owensboro. <laughs> there you go. That's too funny. Too funny. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's also another thing we're really trying to promote is this town, it doesn't lack creatives. Mm-hmm. It's just they don't have anywhere to do their craft. Right. Right. Um, so we, we are really like, I've set up a woodworking laboratory. I'm going to buy a laser engraver. You know, we've got 3d printers. We're, we're trying to make everything in house. Eventually I'm talking tech wise, everything. Wow. That's Um, that's cool. And you know, I know people that work at theater workshop that are master craftsmen, but you would never know because there's just nowhere them for them to do their work. Right. There's nowhere to get it on display. Right. Yeah. Now, um, Tony was talking before you got here that he kind of had he kind of had an idea in his head. Yeah. He wanted mm-hmm. to share with you. Okay. Yeah. Because it you, better be good. Well, you had said you had live actors, so <laughs> yes, I was kind of thinking of and this almost, may not be possible, but he's just gonna throw this out at you. Right. Almost when you when you have a scenario in a room, say like um. Because clowns were like the crazy thing that was happening in the right, world. Right, uh, about a year ago. Right, yeah. almost having a volunteer victim be, say, you know, like hostile, be in a chair, and you have, you know, set time limit to figure out how to get your friend out of the chair. If yeah. they don't get out in time, they get a pie to the face. That's you know, pretty – so or, that's a great idea. We have actually toyed with that before. Yeah. So, or, um, you know, a more horror-based one, you know, they maybe they get sprayed with right. fake blood or something. No, that know, would be so, so. cool. We, we've actually – and to, to build on that, like that's a great idea. That's something that's totally doable. This is something we had in mind that's not really doable, but it would be to, like, install a, a mole – in the room from the group, oh, like yeah. basically, be, you know, like the right. old. Um, you guys remember when Ben Stein's money? Yeah, yeah. they go in those booths <laughs> and they put the uh, the ear her, headphones on, right. and you know they wouldn't hear anything. Something like that. Sequester them all individually. Slip one of them a piece of paper. Mm. You're, you know, you murdered whoever, whoever. Yeah. And yeah, um, you know, in the ballroom with the lead pipe. Yeah, exactly. And Kinda you like you have to play Ooh. play off that. But then we thought, man. There's a lot of people that don't want that kind of responsibility or pressure. And let's say two minutes in, they're like, I think it was, yeah, I think it was a lead pipe. You know, like, boom, game's over. Right. Something like that. Yeah. But we would, uh, we we talked about doing stuff like that, like a dinner theater sort of deal um, where, you know, like a company would sign up, let's say 25 people or or a large group, Mm -hmm. and they know exactly what they're getting into. They prepare, you know. 
they really get into the characters, and we think it would just be a blast for people. Oh, yeah, people. wouldn't it? Like, yeah. like a, kind of like an Agatha Christie mystery yeah, or something? Yeah, anything like that, yeah. yeah. Hmm. But your idea is really good, and we've looked into that, too. Um, it's just who who signs up for that kind of abuse, right? You know, <laughs> Tony be like, <laughs> <"That'd> be <me." laughs> I'll do it all day. Yeah. Every group, yeah. Yeah. you'd kind of find out who your friends really are because you know if there's That's ten true. seconds left and you're like, I know how to get you out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Or even yeah. better idea, we lock one of them in the giant chest. And that's the end goal. Rescue your friend. And they're just sitting in that chest screaming and beating the whole game. That would be great. (laughs) We'd have a lot of people paying tickets to do that, that right? That would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Or or something where uh, where the person that's in the chair is the quote unquote victim and their friends all like let him ha ha let him get the pie and yeah. then somebody come in and hit all them with pies instead because <laughs> they because they let him lose. One of the uh, mm-hmm. most exciting ideas we've come up with a while that people have been really receptive to is like mm-hmm. an adult version of hide and go seek. So let's say in, in this the kidnapper scenario we currently have mm-hmm. the kidnapper just comes in at random times stays for. 20 seconds, watches people run into a cage, and then leaves. In this scenario, there would be probably, I don't know, 20 or 30 hiding places in a room. Mm -hmm. You'd have, let's say, a group of five or six adults, and they would literally have to evade somebody the whole time. Oh, wow. We we think that would be a really neat sort of idea. So that would almost kind of be like when the laser tag thing you're talking about. Yeah, pretty pretty close to that. Yeah. Have to hide from the killer or the killer is gonna shoot you or kill you or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah. That could be cool. And then they'd be tagged and then they'll uh you're dead. So Right. We caught you and you're yeah, you're done for. Yeah. But we 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 have so many great ideas. Just the space factor. Yeah. And of course, I guess the safety is more of an issue in that one because you got a lot of people running in different directions and slamming right. things. And yeah, you, yeah, it, yeah. But still, it's the the concept and the idea. It seems like it's definitely something that's doable. It's just right. a matter of getting all the all the little details yeah. worked out. And even as somebody that's like once they're taken out of the game, if you could pull them to where they could sit and watch what's happening to everybody else, or even interact like in some way, like have oh, yeah. trigger buttons or something to <laughs> oh, yeah. create something yeah. happening. Yeah. Or maybe a voice that comes out of the speaker, you know, you thought you got rid of me. What? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Oh, you know, so I'm in control now. How so. many oh, yeah. people do you have in your creative group that you, you helps you run all of this? So I try to be as versatile as I can, but I need lots of help. I'll be honest all the yeah. time. So, um, uh, Max and I do the brunt of the work. We're, we're really starting right now. Our big project is learning microcomputers, Raspberry Pi, Arduino, that sort of stuff. Oh, wow. My son knows all that stuff. Does he? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, see? Oh, yeah, it's, there yeah, there, there we go. That part-time okay, job, okay we got at least three in the group now. <laughs> there you go. Um, we have another guy that kind of works at Theater Workshop. He's given us great ideas. He's always there when we need help with like a, a physical construction, like wood-wise or you know, metal, something like that. Um, I have a, had a lot of help from my girlfriend's father. He is owns a lot of rental properties. Mm-hmm. He knows how to build and fix pretty much anything. All right. That's all. That's very handy. Yeah. And um, I just hired a, another employee. Um, she is very artistic, much more so in the drawing and um, pretty, I guess, side of art that I can't right. ever hope to be good at. So um, there, there's a bunch of us around, and we, we just love working with other creative people. Oh, another guy – should mention first nathan seaton he's mm-hmm. i'm not sure if you all know of him he's very technical he does a, he runs the Noensboro facebook page oh cool and it's probably okay. the biggest page in town but he loves escape rooms and he's helped me with videos and editing and very cool um he does 360 shots i think he might even have a drone oh wow. um yeah he's nice he's doing good <laughs> yeah. he has a lot of fun with it yeah. Imagine, imagine. That's cool. So we need yeah. to this guy too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we, we just have fun and um, everyone's welcome. We love people just stopping by and being like, how did you, how did you make that bomb diffusal kit? Like, that's so fun for us. That's why we do it. It's yeah. Other people can learn. Yeah. This is, this is kind of a community that for a little bit now, we haven't been as resourceful as I think we could have. We've hired a lot of outside people to come in and build everything in this company or in this city. And I think we really need to get back to when we had that GE plant out here yeah. where we were like making and producing. Yeah. Um, 
I know there's still some great companies around like oh, yeah. Kentron and you know a bunch of the other big manufacturers, but we we like to just really push resourcefulness and yeah. utilitarianism, I guess. That's how I felt about the artists because they hired an outside artist to mm-hmm. do all the buffalo sculptures. And that I really just thought that was a slap in the face. Our city the really artists. takes the easy way out a lot of the time. You know, yeah, they really they should have definitely got together, even with a team of artists, mm-hmm. you know, locally to to do that. You right. Know, because it, it, it's all about Owensboro, but yet they hired someone from right. out of state. And paid them 10 times probably what it would have right. cost. Inst- I mean, we probably could have had a local art competition that would have. You know, great, gotten great publicity, and they yep. probably would have done it for next to nothing. And we would have had just as good, if not better, yeah, buffalo. Yeah, I mean, no, no offense to the the buffalo professional sculptors out there, but <laughs> I don't know, one buffalo size fits all. I think <laughs> pretty much, pretty much could yeah. be wrong. Yeah, it, it definitely should have been someone local. Yeah, and we've got a great. Um, well, when I used to work at Family Video, we used to have a great local movie making scene, and I'm sure it's still around. It's, yeah, um, it's still really yeah. good. Yeah, we, you just don't hear as much about it anymore yeah. because it's we just don't have an outlet for them. We need to listen to our podcast more because we. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Movie <laughs> In fact, two weeks ago we had. Uh, PJ Starks and Eric Huskison on here. Oh, okay, of good horror movies. Oh, awesome! I'll let you borrow one. <laughs> <laughs> Which their movies are doing really great. Well, that's they're, wonderful. They're accolades from all over the horror movie world. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. The Volumes of Blood series is what it is. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. And Dave Snyder, um, a Dave local. Snyder. Special effects artist who yeah he actually yeah he, he born and raised in Owensboro and awesome. then uh, and then he actually now is been has been for many years uh, uh, Hollywood uh, makeup artist wow. working on major motion pictures well that's great uh, yeah. in fact he that one right there well, yeah where he's worked on two of the pirates <laughs> movies and uh, he worked on uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy was the oh, latest sweet. thing he's worked on you Doing guys are going to hate me but I still haven't seen Guardians of the Galaxy that's okay that's alright <laughs> no I don't, don't hate you I don't hate you I just feel sorry that you're missing out on such a good product that's what it is yeah, yeah you, no. you definitely there's so many there's it. so many movie choices out there so yeah. no 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 no, no well, a- after three years of working at Family Video and seeing literally yeah. every movie that yeah. came yeah. out <laughs> I realized how much time I was actually waiting Wasting sitting in front of a, a you know a screen, yeah. and I was like, maybe I should stop doing this so often. Yeah, well, you know, and, and that, and of course, that makes sense. Have you seen so many videos? So yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of like my daughter now works at uh, at the local theater. Okay, and uh, of course, I'm like, you know. Oh, Let's go watch a movie. And she's like, I don't really want to. Yeah. Yes, we're going to go watch I'm a movie. I'm there all day. <laughs> the, the Malco Theater. Exactly. At Malco.com. We love which the provided Malco us with yeah. these beautiful posters the that you see behind us. Malco.com. 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 Right. Malco. Malco.com. Malco. Yeah, exactly. All right. Three plugs. Good to go for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And your uh, website is the escapeowensboro.com. Yep. Escapeowensboro.com. All that right. That's correct. David Haynes has been a wonderful joy to have you on this podcast. Well, Thanks we so really much for appreciate having you me. coming in. And I think I'm going to try and maybe stop by um, next day or so, maybe and get just a little bit of footage and maybe a oh, couple yeah. of screenshots that I'll add on to the end of our YouTube video with this. Sounds like a plan. And if you need some really unprofessional, shaky video, I've already got that for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Uh, and and, uh, and is there anything else that you want to tell people about? Any, any other uh, any events or things like that you got coming up? Oh, anything? actually, I'm glad you brought that up. So this weekend, we're doing a you know big patriotic deal, 4th of July, switching our rooms out sort of special. We're doing 20% off all of our rooms, every ticket, no questions asked, from Friday until this coming Monday. Awesome. Fan. So Fantastic. you can get that deal online or you can call us. I know a lot of people prefer to book over the phone. Oh. So yeah. so is it kind of a farewell to the rooms that are there now? It is. And actually, uh, it's not the final farewell. We just thought, um, well, I don't have to work this week. And that's the big reason I'm doing the promotion. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, uh, we uh, we thought that it would just be good to kind of give back a little bit. We we About every two months, we'll do a big 20% off promotion just, awesome. just to get the company or the community back in, in the fold a little bit more. Yeah. And um, we love giving away gift cards. We're going to do a scavenger hunt pretty soon oh. around the town. Nice. Like that. Be a lot of fun. Um, and then when we do get rid of our rooms, we're going to have a two-week period where they are deeply discounted, and we're talking like 50% off. Awesome. So, yeah. Fantastic. Stay tuned to our social media. We we update daily. So Fantastic. Well, yeah. we'll check it out. 
Awesome. David, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right. Tony? My eyeball was itching. It so is. That, that, <laughs> that, was, that was really good. Is that the cue? Too, so. too much wind, right? <laughs> <laughs> too much wind from the fan and our fancy uh, old-timey light bulbs. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, those are some well, nice Edison bulbs. They are, yeah. aren't they? That's it. See, I couldn't even think of when you told me. That's okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to this episode of Escape Pod. See ya. Adios. My eye, for real? <laughs> it started scratching and itching? No, it just like a super dry all of a sudden. Well, that was a lot of fun. Good, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. for listening to this episode of Escape Pod. If you enjoyed it, please like the episode and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to be a part of future podcasts, then email us at outbreakpodcast at gmail.com. And be sure to visit our website, outbreakpodcast.com, for more episodes, show notes, photos, and other podcasts on the Outbreak Podcasting Network. That's outbreakpodcast.com.